Now, give it a try. Okay, is it working? Okay. Um, well, today what we're going to do is we are going to talk about information literacy. And the Virginia Community College System has created this new course called Information Literacy because they're aware that students have to be not only uh, smart and knowledgeable about computers, but you also have to be smart and knowledgeable about research. So this course is designed to teach you not only computer skills, but research skills too. So today and also next week, uh, we'll be talking about the library portion of this course, the research skills. And today we're going to be focusing on books. So this is the day to learn about books and how to find books uh, using our online resources. So we're going to begin right here and the first thing we're going to talk about is the Library of Congress classification system uh, because that's what we use to arrange our books on the shelf. When you walked into the library today, you walked past a whole lot of tall shelves out there and those books are shelved on those tall shelves waiting for you to go over there and take them off and check them out. Uh, but they're arranged in a particular order. So what order are those books arranged in? Does anybody have any idea? How do we arrange those books? Well, now that's a very good guess. It's wrong, but it's a very good guess because the Dewey Decimal System is a method of arranging, arranging books on the shelf. Uh, so that made a lot of sense. And that's probably what your high school library used. It's what the public library uses. But most colleges use something called the Library of Congress classification system. And that's what you have right here on this handout. Um, what does the word classify mean? Think about the classified ads in the newspaper. Why are they classified? Think about classification of plants and animals. What does classify mean? Grouping. Grouping. Grouping, right. Grouping. So when you classify, those ads are classified in the newspaper because they're grouped by cars for sale, houses for sale, uh, garage sales. They're classified ads. And we classify or group our books. And this is what we use to classify or group the books. This is the long handout that you have here. And it's called the Library of Congress classification system because it was invented by the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. And this is what we use. So if you came into the library and you took this list right here and you walked up and down the shelves of the library and compared this list to the books, you would see that first you came to the general works and then you came to the philosophy, religion, psychology books, then all the history books and on and on and on until you got to the end of the shelves and you would get to the military science, naval science, and bibliography books. So this is the order that the books are arranged. So how does this help you? Um, well, first of all, when the cataloger gets a book in the library, she looks at that book and she says, what is this book about? Um, what is the subject of this book? So this is a subject classification system. We use the subject of the book to decide where it goes. So let's say she decides that this is an art book, a painting book, how to paint a picture. She will assign the first two letters of the call number based on the fact that this book is about how to paint or painting. So what would be the first two letters of the call number that she assigned to an art book, a painting book? I heard somebody say it. N-D, right. So art is N, so it would go in the N section with the other art books and then ND is painting. Now suppose um, you just got a new digital camera and you want to uh, find the section of the library that where the photography books are. So this chart would help you find that section of the library. You would look on this chart and you would look for the photography books. 
You don't know the name of a particular photography book. You don't know the author of a photography book. But you just know that you want to browse that section. So what section of the library would you be browsing through? I heard somebody say T TR. So if you look in the T's, that's technology, and then look down, you see in TR, you see photography. So you go to that section, you could browse through that section and see what kind of photography books we have there uh, in the library in the TR section. So does anybody have any questions about the Library of Congress system? Okay. Well, the next thing, now you know how we shelve things on the shelf. Now what you need to know is how to use those Library of Congress call numbers um, to find the books on the shelf. <clears throat> So let me show you. This is what a Library of Congress call number eventually ends up looking like. It's not just the first two letters. There's a, uh, a second line right here that usually subdivides the subject. What is PR? What section is PR? Language, well, P is language and literature. What is PR? English literature. English literature. OK. So, it's language and literature, English literature. This is a subdivision. I'm not sure what it's for. It might be Shakespeare, for example. I don't really know. I'm making that up. But it is a subdivision. And then this line down here represents the author's last name. So this might be somebody named uh, Mr. Barnes, who wrote a book about Shakespeare, which would be in the uh, English language and literature section. And this means it's copy one. We have maybe two copies, so this is a copy one. So that's how the call number gets put together. You don't have to know all of that, but you do have to know that the call number is a lot longer than just the first two letters. And you also need to know how to put these call numbers in order. So that's what we're going to do right now. And I'm... Mm -hmm. The B67, that's usually a representation of the author's last name. And, the last and this means it's copy one. We might have two copies of this book, and this particular call number went to copy one rather than copy two. But you don't have to know that. That, that won't be on the test. So don't worry about that. Now what I do need is six people to come up here and pretend they're books. So just because we have an obstacle here in the middle of the room, I'm going to volunteer six people from the front row. And don't worry about it, um, the people up here near the front, because you don't have to do the thinking or decision making. You're just going to stand here and hold a, a call number. And the people in the back are going to put them in order. So if the people up here on the front row, plus I think I need you too, will just take one of these. Don't put yourselves in order. Just stand up here in any order. And then the rest of the classmates, let's just kind of get up here so everybody can see you. The rest of the classmates will put these people in order. So when you're putting books in order, you want to start with the top line and look at the top line first. So looking at the top line, which of these books would come first or down at that end? PA. PA. Okay, so this is PA, so we're going to ask PA to move down to that end. And which of these books would come last? P.S. PS. So P.S., we're going to ask you to come over here. So now we have uh, four books that all have the same call letters up there on the top line. They're all P.R. So we have to move down one line because that top line doesn't ha help us. We're going to move down to the second line. And on that second line, those are whole numbers. Those are not Dewey numbers. This is 1,175. This is 118. So which of these come first of the PR? Okay, 118. So we'll ask 118 to move down there. Now we have three of them here that we haven't done anything with. And they all have the same number on that second line. So now we have to move down one more line in order to put these books in order. And we, we move down to the third line there. That's a decimal number on the third line. So the first thing we would look at would be the letter. 
but unfortunately we have B's in all three of these cases, so that doesn't help us much. So then we have to deal with decimals. Now, um, as you know, this would be 68 one hundredths, and that would be 8 tenths, but uh, we librarians are not too good about putting decimal things in order thinking that way. That's too complicated for us. So we have various ways of putting decimal numbers in order. The first one I'm going to say, if, if you understand this and this is how you put decimal numbers in order, then it works. It's not how I do it, but it works. Some people like to take the longest number, which would be this one right here, and see how many zeros they need to add to each one of these to make it as long as that one. So here they would go, eight, zero, zero, zero. This is too complicated for me, but if that's how you do it, it does work, and you can stick with that method. The way I put decimal numbers order, in order, I just take it number by number. I say B6 versus B8 versus B6. And then I decide based on that how I want to rearrange it. So um, given that method, how, tell me how you think these people should be arranged. Okay, so which one comes first? In the white shirt. In the white shirt? Mm -hmm. Where she is right there? Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, who do you want to put second? B68. B68? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to switch these two people. And then B8. So everybody agree with that one? Comfortable with that? Yeah, that looks pretty good to me, too. All right, does anybody have any questions about it? Okay, well, thank you very much. The books have done an excellent job here. So thank you. Yes, give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Come on in, take a handout, each one of these. Oops, sorry. Okay, so that's the Library of Congress system and how to arrange things using the Library of Con Congress system. Um, now, you have a Library of Congress worksheet right here. This is a little exercise that I've given you. This is a homework exercise, and all of these will be due next week at this time. And you can turn them in here in the library next week if you'd like to. Um, I'm going to collect them and grade them and give them to your teacher. So you can turn them in to me. Um, you can turn them in at the circulation desk and we have an envelope up there, please be certain to put your section number on it. What is, uh, give them your section number so we'll know what section. Section 03H. Okay, so section 03H, because I want to make sure it gets in the right envelope, otherwise it's going to go to some other teacher and be lost. So what you do with the classification exercise, and I'm going to do the first one right here. What I want you to do is to read the title of the book, and based on the title of the book, put the first two letters of the Library of Congress call number that you would assign to that book if you were the cataloger. You'll be needing this chart because this is what you'll use to assign the call number. So you just look at the title and assign it a call number. There's not necessarily an absolutely right or wrong answer here. It has to be reasonable. Um, you know, if you're way off base, then I'm going to mark it wrong. But if you've made a reasonable guess, um, I'll mark it right. So let me do the first one. It says, using the Library of Congress classification chart, available in the TNCC library, but you're actually going to keep that. Classify the following books by assigning each one the first two letters of an appropriate Library of Congress call number. You may look the books up at Amazon.com if you need more info about the subject. So the first one might be a little tricky. We don't really know what taming your inner brat is. So what we're going to do is go up here. and type in Amazon.com, and we're going to go to Amazon. hope I spelled it right. There we go. I'm going to go over here, click on Books, Books, and then I'm going to type that title in here.
Taming your inner brat. Hit the go button. Here's the book I want right here, so I'm going to click on that one. And then what I really want is the table of contents page. If I mouse over the picture of the book, it will tell me front cover, table of contents. So I'm going to choose table of contents because I want to know what this book is about. That's what all this is, what I'm aiming for here. This is what this is all about. So here I have some, uh, some of the chapters in the book listed in the table of contents. The inner brat in action. Face it, it is your fault. Um, impulsiveness. Narcissism. Um, common characteristics and problems among the various brat persona. Um, how to identify your inner brat. Signs that your inner brat is in control. So what kind of book do you think this is? Based on this Library of Congress chart, what kind of call number? Well, it could be parenting, but it's basically your inner brat. It, maybe it's like parenting yourself. Psychology. Psychology. I tend to put it more, now I wouldn't mark it wrong in parenting, but because you could use this in parenting, but I don't think it's parenting your bratty kids. It's finding your own inner brat and getting control of it. So I like psychology better. So what call numbers would you put down for this? B, B, F. So B, F. So the first one would probably be B, F. Now, um, it does say on here that you can then, part two, go to WorldCat and look up each of the above books and check to see if they chose the same call number you did. You don't have to do that, but it's a way you can check it to see if you got the same answer that the Library of Congress uh, librarian Scott. So does anybody have any questions about this exercise? It's pretty easy really and it could be kind of fun. Okay. Yeah, we haven't talked about WorldCat yet. We're going to in just a minute. So um, that's the Library of Congress classification system and that's your homework based on that part of today's lesson. So now we're going to move on to another part of today's lesson. And we're going to talk about the online catalog, speaking of WorldCat. So let me go back here to our Thomas Nelson page. This is actually our Thomas Nelson library page. And this is where you're going to go to do a lot of this work. If you end up at the Thomas Nelson home page, if you go to current students and then go down to learning resources, that will take you to the libraries page. So you can do a lot of this from home if you have an internet connection. Some of this does not require that you come here to the library to do it. So uh, what I'm going to show you is some of the different catalogs that you can use to find books on your topic. Now, I'm going to pretend that I'm um, a student in an ITE 119 class and we have to do some library research, and we have to choose a topic. Do they have to choose a topic for this class that they'll be? They're going to identify a problem and choose a topic. And okay, okay. Well, um, I'm going to choose the topic of uh, George Wythe. George Wythe was a uh, patriot back in revolutionary times. He was a very well known law, very well known lawyer and law professor at the College of William and Mary. He was Thomas Jefferson's law professor. So he had a lot of influence over Thomas Jefferson and over the laws of the United States. And the interesting, one of the interesting things about George Wythe was that he had a nephew who was just awful, um, who lived with him some of the time. And the nephew spent, gambled and spent all his money. And he was the only um, relative of George Wythe. So all George Wythe's money was designed to go to his nephew. Well, the nephew just couldn't wait for George Wythe to die so he could get this money. So he took arsenic and put it in the coffee pot in George Wythe's house. And living in, with George Wythe in this house, was a young uh, black boy who was free, a young free black boy who was a servant in the house, and the cook who was a black, free black woman who had been the cook 
for many, many years in this household. Unfortunately, both of them drank the coffee too. The, uh, George Wythe died, the young boy died, but the cook survived. Unfortunately, back then, uh, black people could not testify against white people in the white person's trial, so the cook, even though she had witnessed uh, the nephew messing around with a coffee pot and then throwing a white piece of paper in the fire, she could not testify to this, so um, the nephew got away with murder, literally. And um, it, it now uh, they are going back and looking at this, and um, there has been a recent book on the topic, which I thought was very interesting. So I thought that this would be something interesting to research. So the first thing that I would do to research this is that I would start with the TNCC library catalog. And that's right here on our library page, right there the most important thing on our library page. And this is where I would begin to find a book on my topic. So I'm going to start right there on the TNCC library catalog. Didn't get it. Okay, here we go. Now, as you can see, I have a topic selection sheet for you right here. You can skip the part that tells you to go to Wikipedia to see if there's any article there on your topic. So you can scratch that part out. And we'll just start right here with the go to the TNCC catalog. And what I would like for you to do is to pick more than one topic, maybe three topics, and kind of at the same time investigate all three of these topics so that you'll have one that really works. I'm just going to go through one because we don't have enough time to go through three different topics. But get some different ideas and investigate them and see what, see what uh, kinds of materials there are on those topics so that you can uh, choose one of those topics for your research for this class. Or actually you could, if you've already got a topic in another class, go ahead and investigate the other topic and see what you can find. So. Um, I'm going to type in my topic, George With. Um, notice that I'm going to, do, well, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do a subject keyword search. I could do an author search if I knew the author of a book about George With. I could do a title search if I knew the name of a book about George With. But I don't. I just know I want to know something about him. So I'm doing a subject keyword search. That um, keywords anywhere search, that searches the author, the title, and the subject. It's sort of an overall search. Um, and then notice I'm searching the Thomas Nelson Community College catalog. If I click right here, I can search any of the college catalogs, and I can search them all at the same time with this All Community Colleges link. So if you don't find anything here at Thomas Nelson, you can search all community colleges. And we do have an interlibrary loan service. You can uh, request a book that is owned by one of the other community colleges. It will be sent here to Thomas Nelson. We will check it out to you. You can use it. You can return it back to Thomas Nelson. And uh, then we send it back to the other college. But I'm going to stick with Thomas Nelson for now. And I'm going to hit the Go button. And these are my results. I only got two results back. The first result, the author is Joyce Blackburn. The title of the book is George Wythe of Williamsburg. The publication year is 1975. It's in the circulating collection. That means that it can be checked out. It's those tall shelves over there in the library. This is the call number right here. That's that Library of Congress call number we just talked about. And what is KF on your chart right there? What section is this in? United States law. United States law. So that makes sense because he uh, was a lawyer and known primarily for that. So he's in the uh, law section of the library. It's at the Thomas Nelson Library because that's, uh, that's the only catalog we searched. Notice it says owned out. We own one copy, no copies are checked out, so it is here on the shelf. If you need more information about this book, like the publisher and the place of publication, you can click on this number right in front of the entry, and that will open up the full cataloging for that book.
So this is the same book. And here you can also find out the publisher, Harper and Row, and the place of publication. This is the same date. This is an old book, but it doesn't really matter because what I'm talking about is history. It would be a problem if you were doing a very current topic like global warming. You wouldn't want to use something from 1975, but in this case, it's okay. So that's our Thomas Nelson catalog. Does anybody have any questions about that? And what I ask you here is how many hits did you get, meaning how many results did you get? I got two. So it would say two hits and number of relevant hits. Well, both of these are relevant. They're about the person that I'm interested in. So uh, both of them are relevant. You may end up with 20 items, but only two of them are useful. So that's what I'm asking you here on this sheet. So any questions about the online catalog? All right, so I'm going to um, move on. I'm going back to our Thomas Nelson homepage. And now the second thing that we're going to talk about is WorldCat. That's part D on your sheet right here. So WorldCat is right here. This is what you want to click on to get to the WorldCat link. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to type in my topic again. Now I can type it in right here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, this is the basic search right here. But what I'm going to do is go to advanced search. I always like advanced search. It doesn't mean harder. It means you have more options. So I'm a big fan of always going to advanced search. So it says search for George Wythe, and I'm going to search him as a subject right here. Um, now I can limit it to books if I only want to see books, so I think I will do that. I'm only interested in books, so I'll limit it. And there are other limiters on this page too. So you can decide which limiters you need to use for your search. And then you hit the search button and you get your results back. This looks like the same book we have here in the library, George Wythe of Williamsburg. Um, but you know what, I'm, since I'm particularly interested in the murder of George Wythe, I'm going to choose this one right here. I am murdered, George Wythe, Thomas Jefferson, and the killing that shocked the nation. So this sounds like it would have some information on my topic. So I can click right on this link right here and it will bring up the full cataloging. But what's even more useful is if I click on this link that says Libraries Worldwide, if I click on that link, it will bring up the full cataloging down at the bottom, which you'll see down here. All the cataloging that you need, uh, including some content so you know what the book is about. But notice that up top, I get a list of the libraries that actually own the book. And Virginia is always on top uh, because the software that we're using here knows we're in Virginia. So it shows us the Virginia ones first. So I could possibly borrow it from the College of William and Mary. Is there anything else that's local here? Hampton Public Library, that would be great. I could go down to Hampton Public Library and borrow this book. So this is a great um, database that you can use to find just about any book anywhere. This is called the uh, WorldCat, and it is used by all the large and medium-sized libraries in the United States, both public and college libraries. So it's a great resource, so don't forget that one. And it is number two on your, well, D on your list right here. Any questions about WorldCat? All right, and then the, the next one that I want to show you is Books in Print. Books in Print is one of our Viva databases, but it is not listed here with our most popular Viva databases. So this is a little tricky. You're going to have to either write this down or remember this. To get to Books in Print, you're going to have to go down here where it says Viva Resources by Title, where you can see all 200 or so of our Viva databases. And you get them listed in alphabetical order by title. So then you can either click on the B or you can just scroll down to you get to Books in Print. And it's right here. It's a little hard to find because they didn't put a dot in front of it. But there it is, Books in Print. So you're going to want to click on that.
a little slow opening up here. And then right here, I'm going to do my search. And I'm just going to type in George with. And then I'm going to, oh, and right here, I'm searching in print books, um, out of print books, books that haven't quite been published yet, might be coming out next month. So you can choose your different options to search. And then I'm going to hit the submit button right here and see what I get. If I get too much with this keyword search, and I might, then I might have to go back and make it a subject search. We'll see what happens. Ah, okay, so what I got here, right up top, here is the same book that we looked at in uh, WorldCat, I Am Murdered. So this gives us, books in print is used most often by bookstore owners who are buying books for their bookstore. But it's also used by librarians who are buying books for the library. So it's really a shopping site for books. But nobody's suggesting that you buy these books. What you can use it for is to discover what's out there, what's available. And then once you know what's available, then you go to the library and request it at your library. And if the library doesn't own it, then they can get it for you through interlibrary loan. So it's a way to discover what, what exists so that then you can come and ask your librarian for it. So this one here, I Am Murdered, that's the one we're interested in. The nice thing about books in print is it does have, for some books, it does have reviews. Um, this is all the information if you were going to buy this book. So it's not the kind of information that helps you find it in the library. But right here it does say title reviews. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see that Library Journal and Publishers Weekly, this is a print magazine that helps librarians buy books, tells us what's good. And this is a print magazine that usually bookstore owners read to find out what's good. And it, ha it got a review in both of them, so you can read that and decide whether it's something you're really interested in or, in or not. So when you find it, find something you want, you want to see, you talk to your librarian about getting hold of that book. And then the last one, oh, does anybody have any questions about books in print? The last one I'm not going to do, it's Amazon. I know you all know Amazon, so you can do that on your own. So on each one of these, you just go here, type in your topic, see how many hits you get overall, and how many of those are actually useful and relevant uh, in your research. So does anybody have any questions about this sheet? If you have any questions during the week when you're actually working on this, my name is Lynn Gallagher, and you can call and you can ask for me. And, um, or you can leave me a message if I'm not here, and I'd be glad to help you because I know some students have had trouble with this sheet. So just let me know if you have any questions. All right, so that was what we had to learn about using online catalogs. Any questions about using online catalogs to find books? Nope, okay. Well, the last thing we're going to talk about is reference books. And I'm going to go back to our Thomas Nelson library homepage right here. In your book, in your information literacy book, you have a chapter where you go through and it discusses handbooks and atlases and um, various types of reference books. Well, that chapter, I know it's important that you know the, those things, but uh, if you know what those kinds of books are already, then you really don't even need to read the chapter. And if you don't know what they are, you get such a vague idea by, what, by just a little paragraph description of it that you can finish reading the chapter and just be still clueless. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about reference books and we're going to look at some actual reference books so that um, you'll have at least a feeling of what a, a reference book is and how you use it. Um, we're not, there are um, hundreds of reference books out here in our library and there are thousands of reference books in existence, and I've just picked a very few right here. These are just examples. These are not the best, um, but they're just an example. And when this exercise is over with, I hope that what you gain from this is the idea of, wow, there are a lot of different kinds of reference books, 
and the next time you need to know something, you might think, I wonder if there's a reference book that could give me that kind of information. So that's what we're talking about when we do this reference book section. So what is a reference book as opposed to a book, a circulating book that is not a reference book? What, what makes a reference book a reference book? Well, we do keep it in the library. That's absolutely right. Um, and, it, and it probably is used more than the average circulating book. But there's something else that, how, why do we decide to put it in the reference section? What is it that makes it a reference book as opposed to, what, well, give me an example of a reference. It, it contains facts. That's true. That is true. Give me an example of a reference book. An almanac, good. An almanac, what's another one? Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia. How about another one? A dictionary. So those are reference books. They're books that you refer to for a piece of information. You refer to a dictionary for the definition of a word. You ref but you wouldn't sit down and read the dictionary from cover to cover. You refer to an encyclopedia for an article on a particular country, maybe. But you wouldn't read the encyclopedia from cover to cover. So it's a book that you just refer to for a piece of information. So today, um, I want to show you a few reference books. And you do have a worksheet here to help you learn about a few of the reference books that we have here in the library. Um, this says, go to the TNCC library and look at the, each of the books listed below. Write one to five sentences telling the purpose, this is important, the purpose, the content, and the arrangement of the reference books. Uh, I don't need a huge paragraph. And I really don't want, there's really, again, not a right answer and not a wrong answer about how you write this up. I want you to look at these books and on your own say, well, what is the purpose of this book? Why does this book exist? What, what am I supposed to get out of it? What's inside the book? And how is the book arranged? Is it arranged in alphabetical order? How is it arranged? So you look at each one of these. You will also notice that under dictionary, for example, I have the print version of the Oxford English Dictionary. But then under each one of these, I also have an online version that is similar to the print version. So under the Oxford English Dictionary, I have the Oxford English Dictionary online. So you're going to be looking at both the print version of a, a reference book and an online version too. So let, let me just give you an example of what you're going to do. The first one I have done for you, it says atlas. Look at the National Geographic Atlas of the World. What is an atlas? It's what? Yes, it is geographic information. It's maps. So um, this is the National Geographic Atlas of the World. Lots and lots and lots of maps. An atlas is a book of maps. So what, what you could say on here is the content, oh, well, the purpose first. The purpose is to help people locate places on Earth. The book contains political and physical maps of all countries of the Earth and also has ocean and star maps. And then how is it arranged? It's not arranged in alphabetical order. It's arranged by continent. So all the maps of North America are together. All the maps of Europe are together. So it's arranged by continent. So that's all I really need for each one of these. I don't need a huge long paragraph. And then I ask you to go to MapQuest and look at MapQuest. What, that is the online version of an atlas. And so the purpose of, of MapQuest is to help users find a map of the places they specify. It also creates driving directions from one location to another. So what I'm asking you to do, look at these books, tell me the purpose, content, and arrangement of these reference books, and then go to the corresponding online site and uh, do 
more or less the same thing. Now, of course, online sites, you can't always talk about the arrangement because, you know, how is it arranged? You can't really say that. Um, I have here the Oxford English Dictionary. I only have three volumes. This, this, this is a very unusual dictionary. This dictionary is 22 volumes long, but I didn't want to pull all 22 volumes in here. So this is the Oxford English Dictionary. You would look in here. You would, what I would suggest is that you pick a word or a concept to look up in these various things. For example, I like to dance. I dance tango and other dances too. And so if I were going to go through here, I would look up the word tango. It would tell me what the word means. It would give me examples of how it was used throughout history, the word tango, and I would get some idea of how, why this dictionary is different from other dictionaries. Um, so this is the Oxford English Dictionary. This is Encyclopedia Britannica. I only brought you two volumes of this. It's a huge set. I might look up the word dance in here and see what they had to say about dance in Britannica. That will make it easier on you than just trying to make this up uh, without having, without actually having used it. So use it to look something up. This is Strong's Concordance of the Bible. You can use this. I could look up the word dance in here and it would give me the chapter and verse where that talked about dance. So that's how I would use this. Um, now this is MLA Handbook. Probably many of you have already used this sort of thing in writing your um, papers. So this should not be too hard for you. This is Roger's thesaurus. What's his thesaurus? Absolutely right. You look up a word and it tells you other words that are similar to the word that you, the same meaning as the word you looked up. And, and I ask you, uh, once you've used this, to use the thesaurus in word. Have you done that yet? Yeah, haven't done word yet. Okay. Um, when, let's, let's say we just have a couple more minutes, but when my daughter was in high school, she was taking, in 11th grade, she was taking AP history, and of course those AP students think they're special. And um, her AP history teacher brought in a ninth grader's paper as an example of excellent writing, and all those 11th graders were so insulted that a ninth grader's paper would be held up as a, a, an example of good writing. <coughs> So when I asked her, well, what did you think of the paper? She said, well, all I have to say is that that student certainly knew how to use word thesaurus. So from then on, my daughter would write her paper, and then she would go through, and she would take each word, and she would look it up in the thesaurus, and pick the largest word she could find, and plunk it into that paper. So I'm not saying that's a good thing to do, but um, that is sometimes the use of the word thesaurus. Um, also, we have Occupational Outlook Handbook. If I decide once I retire to become a dancer full time, I can see uh, what my career options are here. Um, this is very useful. What I think you will find even more useful is the online version of this. Former students have said to me, you know, well, most of this I'll probably never use, but boy, did I like that Occupational Outlook Handbook online. So I think you'll really want to look at that. And then this is Granger's Index to Poetry. Um, an index is a book that you use not because what you're looking for is actually in here. The index just leads you to another source. It leads you to what you're looking for. So Granger's Index to Poetry, if I wanted a poem about dance, let's say I'm doing a presentation and I want to recite a poem at the beginning of it, but I don't really know of any poems about dance, I would go to Granger's Index of Poetry, look up dance in here. The poem would not be in here. It would only tell me where I could look to find a poem about dance. So these are the books that you're going to be using. I will leave them right here. Um, your class is over at 1215. So you have until 1215. I would go ahead and do this worksheet first, the one that uses the reference books, because obviously you have to be here in the library to do this, whereas you can do some of that other work at home. So I'd start right here with these, and I'll leave these books right here. Um, after 
class today, these books were, will be out by the circulation desk. We are not going to shelve them for a couple of weeks because several of the ITE 119 classes will be coming in to use them. So we'll leave them on this cart and we'll put them over there by the circulation desk. So they'll be handy for you if you need to come back. If you don't finish today, you can come back and finish up. So does anybody have any questions about reference books? Okay, any questions about anything? All right, well, I am going to um, end now, so thank you very much. And if you do have any questions while you're doing the homework, just let me know. Okay. <laughs> Um, if you have your uh, worksheets from last time that you need to turn in today, hand them in up at the circulation desk and make sure your section number is on it because we have several ITE sections that are doing these same worksheets and you want to make sure that it gets in the right envelope so it gets back to your teacher, not some other teacher. So there, what is their section number again? 03H. Okay, 03H. So make sure you have that on your worksheet so uh, it doesn't go into the wrong envelope. All right, uh, last week we talked about books. This week we're going to talk about periodicals. So our lesson today will be on periodicals. Hello, uh, grab one of each of these worksheets, please. So what, let's begin by defining periodicals. What is a periodical? Give me an example of a periodical. The Daily Press. Right, a newspaper. The Daily Press is an example of a periodical. What's another kind of periodical besides a newspaper? A magazine. Magazine. Magazines, newspapers, uh, anything that comes out periodically, like once a day, a newspaper, once a month, maybe a magazine. So it comes out periodically, so it's called a periodical. Um, and so you're probably all familiar with magazines and with newspapers. Uh, but there's something that you usually, a kind of a periodical that you usually don't run into until you come to college. And that is called a scholarly journal or academic journal or peer-reviewed journal. It's three different names for the same thing. And uh, it, it differs from a magazine. A magazine is published um, because the publisher wants to sell the magazine. Yes, there are a lot of times very good articles in it, and we like to read them and we enjoy them, but the purpose is really to sell the magazine. The uh, scholarly journal, however, has a different purpose. The purpose of the scholarly journal is to share new information in a particular field uh, with professionals or uh, scholars in that particular field. So, for example, most doctors read JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, and um, they also read the New England Journal of Medicine to keep up to date in their field. And you can usually tell a scholarly journal in three different ways. The first way is that it's published by a professional or scholarly uh, organization. So this one is published by the Society for Research in Child Development, the scholarly organization or professional organization. You can also tell a scholarly or peer-reviewed journal because there's a list of experts in, in the front of the periodical. And this list of experts are the people that have to have to read every article before it is accepted for publication in this journal. So when we say it's a peer-reviewed journal, that means these peers of the writers, these experts in the field, read every article and decide whether or not it's worthy to go into this scholarly journal. And then the third way that you can usually tell a scholarly journal is at the end of, the, of each article, there's a list of references or a works cited list that the uh, of books and other articles that the author read before he or she wrote this uh, article in this journal. So you can see a long list of references. So that's three ways to know a scholarly journal, and you know it's different from a um, 
magazine. Now, one of the students in the class said, also you can tell because the magazine is really interesting looking, whereas the scholarly journal looks really boring. So uh, that may be a fourth way, but that doesn't count on a quiz. Um, so does anybody have any questions about scholarly journals? Well, it's pretty easy to tell a scholarly journal when you're holding it in your hand, but when you're using our online periodicals databases, you can't see it, so you can't look for the list of scholars, and you can't always tell who publishes it. So there is a way, when we get online, to limit our results to these scholarly journals, and I'm going to show you that, but I just wanted to explain to you first what they are. So today we're going to start talking about different ways of finding periodical articles. Now, you cannot use our online catalog to find a periodical article on a particular subject. If you go to our online catalog, it will tell you that we have a particular periodical. It'll tell you that we subscribe to child development, and we subscribe to health, and we subscribe to Ladies Home Journal, but it won't tell you what's inside them. And that's what you need to know. If you're writing a paper on a particular topic, it doesn't do you any good to know that we have a particular journal. You need to know what's inside those journals, where you can find an article on your subject. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to look at several different databases that help you find periodical articles. And I'm going to begin with one that probably you're going to feel very comfortable with, and that is Google Scholar. Um, it looks very much like Google, so I'm just going to begin right here and go to Google. Google.com. So I'm going to go to Google, and this, of course, I'm sure every single person in this classroom has already used. And most of the time your teacher says, please do not use Google for your research. And for a good reason, because when you use regular old Google, you get all kinds of stuff. Some of it's wonderful and very valuable, and some of it is complete trash. And there's, you have to use your web evaluation skills to try to figure out whether what you're looking at is valuable or truly trashy. Um, sometimes it's pretty easy to figure it out, but sometimes it's really difficult. So a lot of teachers don't approve of Google, but there is a way that you can pretty much limit what you get to very valuable resources, and that's to use Google Scholar. To find Google Scholar, you can go to Google and click on More right there, and then come right here and click on Scholar. And here's Google Scholar. Um, it's going to be very different from Google. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a search here on Google Scholar, and at the same time we do a, skirt, a search on Google Scholar, I'm going to go through the search process using this handout that you got. So let's uh, grab that. And this is basically helping you create a good search and how to get to a good search. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that my topic when I'm doing this Google Scholar search is I want to find information on coal mining safety laws and regulations in Virginia. You see that written at the top of your uh, handout right there. So let's say I'm writing about coal mining and the deaths that occur in coal mining or the diseases that occur uh, in coal miners like black lung disease. And I want to find out if there are any laws or regulations in Virginia governing coal mines and what they are. So I'm going to begin right here at Google Scholar. And the first thing that I'm going to want to search is coal mines. Now, I can just type right in this box right here, type in coal mine. Uh, but there's another way you can search this. You can go to advanced search right here and do an advanced search. And I like advanced search because it helps me make a better search. So I come right here and it says, find articles with all of the words. Now I can put coal mine right in here and it will do a search on 
finding every article that has the word coal and the word mine in it. But uh, would that turn up something, some stuff I didn't want? For example, if I found something that said uh, the coal black kitten was so cute I knew she must be mine, would you get that if you put coal mine up here? Yeah. Yes, you would. You would because it has the word coal and it has the word mine, but it's not what we want. So what we want is the exact phrase, coal mine. Take, a, take two handouts, please, sir. Oops, not fast enough. Um, here we go. All right, so what I really am looking for is the exact phrase coal mine, and I'm going to type it in here, and that way those two words would be together. Coal mine. And then I'm going to search scholar and see what I get. And I got 100, uh, 131,000, or about that many, results that have the word coal mine in them. But if I look over here, notice it has nothing to do with Virginia. It has nothing to do with safety or regulations because I only searched on coal mine. Also notice that it put the word coal mine in quotes. So if you're going to type right in this box, if you want to want it to search as a phrase, you can put quotes around it and then it will stick those words together as a phrase. But this is way too much to look at. Um, let me go over here to the board. And you've got this sheet right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called <coughs> Venn diagrams. So let me see if I can do this. This is the word coal. And this is the word mine. And each one of these circles here represents a set of all the articles that have the word coal in it or have the word mine in it. Now, if I want to find only those articles that have the word coal and the word mine in it, what part of this would I co color in to show? I'm going to and these together. And what part of this would I cover in to show the results I would get back with the word coal and the word mine in the article. The middle. The middle? Okay. Like right in here? Does everybody agree with that one? Or we're anding them together. So I want only those articles with the word coal and the word mine in them. So this is correct. So on your sheet right here, you can color in that middle part right there, and that is anding coal and mine together. Um, this is also called the intersection. The intersection of two sets. Now, I also want the word safety. So coal mine safety and regulations in Virginia. So I want the word safety in here. Well, I, if these articles don't have anything to do with safety, I don't want to see them. So I'm going back to advanced scholar search, and I say also I want the word safety in here. So I type it in there. I do my search. Notice it puts it up here in the box. Uh, in this box, these are all anded together. So you don't have to type the word and in there. As a matter of fact, if you do, it will say, oh, you don't have to type the word and in here. We're anding them together for you. Did you have a question? Right. When you went to advanced search, was there a reason why you put uh, coal mine in the second box instead of the first one? Yeah, because in this first box right here, these two words don't have to be right together as an exact phrase. So that's why it would find the cold black kitten was so cute, I knew she must be mine. If I put it up here, then it would find that article. But if I put it down here, it wouldn't. And I don't want it to because it doesn't have anything to do with coal mine. This is the exact phrase, and these two words have to be stuck together. And that's really what I wanted right there. So, so now I put in safety. I'm down to a mere... 37,300 articles, so I've gotten fewer results, but hopefully they're more on target. So let me go back here to the board again, and what we're going to do, look at number two on your sheet, 
should be colored in? Or what part can I erase? like this. We're doing this sheet in class if you want to, or you can do it on your own later, so uh, you could go ahead and do that. So this, this is my results. Notice I've got fewer results, which is true up here, but they should be more on target. Okay, so now what do I want? I want any article that's about coal mine safety. I, I also want it to have the words law. I want it to be coal mine safety laws and regulations in Virginia. So ignore this for a minute. I'm going to kind of jump over here and talk about oaring things together. So the, these are sets. This is a set of all articles that have the word law. And the word regulation. And I'm actually going to or these together. Although it says on here laws and regulations, what I really want is any article that has any information about coal mining laws or any article that has anything about coal mining regulations or any articles that have anything about coal mining laws and also has something about coal mining regulations. I'll take any of it. It doesn't have to have both the word law and the word regulation in it. So I'm oaring together, just ignore this part, I'm oaring together law or regulation. So how much of this would I color in? All of it. All of it. Okay, so I would color in all of this. This is an or. So I would take any article that had any of this in it. Does that make sense right there? Yes, Kind of makes sense? Okay, so that's what an or looks like, and this is also called the union of two sets. Okay, um, now, let me go up here and try it first and see what happens. This time, I'm actually going to go back to advanced scholar search. Right here. Come on in and grab two handouts right there. Um, so it has to have um, at least one of these words. At least one of them. So it have both of them, but at least one of these. So this is kind of where you or things together. Law, regulation. And then I hit search scholar. And so it says, safety and law or regulation and the phrase coal mine. And so now I am down to 14,000 articles right here. Uh, so let me go back here and draw this because we can overlap this with what we're doing. This is an or, but we're actually taking this and anding it over here with these. So I'm going to erase this. So I'll have a little room here. Let me see if I can draw this. I can actually get some of this in here. Okay, so this right here is law. And Uh, 
and this is regulation. So uh, we are we are oaring these together, but then we're anding them with all this other stuff. So what part of this would I actually um, now have colored in, or what part do I need to erase? You can do this on your sheet. Um, if you want to, you can go ahead and color it in on your sheet and then tell me what part I should erase. You might have to come up here and point to it because it's kind of hard to describe, I guess. Basically, we know I'm going to erase something because I'm going to get fewer results, right? When I and law or regulation together. So I'm going to get fewer results, so I know I'm going to erase something up here. So what part safety? Safety in mind. What are you looking for? <laughs> I'm, I'm look, the big picture is I'm looking for an article about coal mining safety laws and regulations oh, okay. in Virginia. Oh, okay. right. So that's what I'm looking for. Information about coal mine. That's the top line on your first sheet right there. So that's what I'm looking for. But I'm trying to narrow down my results and narrow them down and narrow them down. And so what I'm trying to get you to do, because maybe I'm maybe this is more confusing than helpful but I'm trying to get you to learn how to use those boolean operators and or and not you'll see them again and again and again when you do searching online so that's that's the point here how to use and or or not so I'm actually oring these two together but then I'm anding those results as you can see up on that top line right there with this other stuff so I know because I'm doing an and, I'm going to get fewer results. I would think you, oh. the little <laughs> corner piece that has all the circles in it, but I'm not for sure if you want the, the law and regulation because that's the or. But I know that would be and if you have that just that little piece, that little tiny piece that has Just everything. this little tiny piece? Uh -huh. No, I don't want the No, it's the right top piece. This one. Up here. It's just the or I'm not sure about. Okay, well, this is, this is what I decided. You can tell me if you think this is wrong. I decided that what I need to erase is this part right up here. This little teeny patch right up here because it doesn't have regulation and it doesn't have law. And then leave the little bottom part right down here. What do you think? Oh, sure. right. <laughs> That's all right. You just erase the corner. This little part right up here, because that little piece does not have either law or regulation in it. So that's where I am right now. I'm down here with just this little bow tie. Everybody comfortable with that? Why can't? You just have that little tiny triangle because I mean it's the same thing as the other two on the outside. Well, because this little triangle right here, we decided had coal and mine and safety and law. It doesn't have regulation, but we said we would take law or regulation. So we got law, we're settling for it. This one, same thing. It has safety, it has coal, it has mine, it has regulation. It doesn't have law, but we said we'd be okay with that too. That's why we're oaring them together. And then this little teeny piece, that has both law and regulation, and coal, and mine, and safety. So it has it all, but we don't have to have it all. We can have all three of these, and law, all three of these, and regulation, but we didn't necessarily need both. Okay? So now we're going to come up here and see, see where we're going with this. So we got it up here already. So now my last little piece of the pie right here is that we want this to have something to do with Virginia. So I'm going back to advanced scholarship, advanced scholar search. And I'm going to go right here with all of the words again because I want to put the word Virginia in here. And this seems to be the best place to do it. It's not an exact phrase. Uh, I definitely want to include it. So I don't want to put it down here on this or line. So I'm going to put it right up here. And then I'm going to do my search again. 
I'm down to 5,000, a little over 5,000 results right there. Um, so I have reduced it again. And let's see what we have here. Doesn't show Virginia. Here's, well look, this is West Virginia. I don't really want West Virginia. West Virginia again. Hmm. West Virginia again. So I'm getting the wrong state here. So I'm not, I'm not happy with this. So now what do I want to do? Well, let's go back and look at what we're going to do with West Virginia to get rid of West Virginia and limit us to Virginia. Okay, ignore this for a minute. We're just jumping over here again. A little side drawing over here. And what we're going to talk about now is not. Here are all the results that have the word Virginia. Here are all the results that have the word West. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a not right here because we want the word Virginia in our results. We don't want the word West. These results would have anything to do with Virginia. These results would have the word West, even like wild, wild West. But this little patch right in here has West Virginia. This is about the state West Virginia. So if I'm saying not west. What part of this is not west? Shade in Virginia. Shade in Virginia. How much of Virginia? All of it. All of it. Yeah. So you think I should just go? No, the middle. So up till right here. Yeah. Okay, I like this answer uh, because here I've got things about Virginia, but not where Virginia and West intersect right here. So if it's West Virginia, <coughs> I'm leaving it out. So that would be um, not, your operator not. So that's how that works. So let's go up here. Go back to advanced dollar search and come right down here without the words and I type in the word West. And then I do that's in that box. Yeah. Oh, without, the without the words. Without the words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Yeah. Without the words, because I don't want the word West in it. And then I do search. And now I should get things that have to do with Virginia. Mining companies in Kentucky and Virginia. New Mexico, Virginia, Puerto Rico. Uh, Virginia. So it has the word Virginia, but not West Virginia. And then, because I just cannot draw it on the board, I'm going to let you do this last one yourself. And then you can turn this sheet in uh, by this time next week. These two sheets, today's sheets, will be due. So this is uh, what you're going to be doing uh, for next week. So does anybody have any questions? You, you've been doing Boolean searching with Boolean operators. So what are the three uh, most well-known Boolean, Boolean operators that we use to search these databases? And or not. And, and, or, not. and or not. So that's what you're going to use when you put your search together. So when you sit down at Google, don't just type a string in there, what they call natural language. Don't just type in things like, coal mine safety laws and regulations in Virginia. It will give you something. It, Google is amazing, but you'll get much better results if you think it through, if you use the advanced search, which is on both, both Google and Google Scholar. Now, the other thing I need to point out is what you got back. Um, you know what you get on Google. You get websites mostly, some good, some bad. What you get back here is mostly scholarly journal articles, those scholarly journals we talked about. This one right here, this article came from something, well, this is the author right here, J.L. Weeks, that's the author of the article. It came from something called Annual Reviews in Public Health. This is the date of that journal. It's, it's an annual review, comes out once a year. and. Uh, so it is a scholarly journal. The second one right here. 
the effect of unionization on safety in bituminous deep mines. This is, these are the authors right here. What is the name of the journal that it came out of? Okay, it came from the Journal of Labor Research. That's what's on the cover of the journal. This is the article inside the journal. This is what's on the cover of the journal. It's an, it's an oldie, 1984. This is the publisher. Springer. Um, here's one, Job Safety Law of 1970. Um, that's the title of the article. These are the, this is the author, title of the journal. Monthly Labor Review, right there. Again, an old one. We're getting some kind of old ones here, but um, we can probably somehow limit it by date, too, but we're not going to bother with that. But when you click on this, some of these will open up full text, and some of them won't. So let me just pick on this one right here and click on it. Okay, so this one did open up for us, full text. Ooh, maybe not. Basic HTML. Page one, let's see if we can get a page two. Mm. No, maybe not. So this one is not opening up for us full text. We probably need to subscribe to this. So what happens here is a lot of these are very valuable publications. The publisher doesn't just want to give them away to anybody on the internet. They want you to pay. So a lot of times they're going to ask you to pay some money. Let me come right over here. And it says, okay, if you already have a username and password, put it in here. But you don't. Um, and then a lot of times it will say, do you want to buy this article? It'll cost you $15, $20. Rather than bar buying the article online or just giving up, come to the library and ask, print out the information that you have first. Print out the citation so that I know what it is you're looking for and then come to the library and ask your librarian to get it for you through interlibrary loan. It's free, doesn't cost you a thing, saves you the fee that you would pay to access this article and this is a service that's available both at Thomas Nelson and when you go on to your four-year college they have huge interlibrary loan departments just ask the interlibrary loan librarian to get it for you for free. Sometimes when you're here on campus and you click on some of these, they will open up right here on the screen. Because if we have paid for a subscription, somehow Google knows, and I don't know how they do it, it's magic, they know that we have paid for it and you can see the whole article right here on the computer. If you were at home doing it, you wouldn't. So sometimes it's better to actually do your research through Google Scholar on campus. But in any case, if you can't get to something, fill out an interlibrary loan form, print out a copy of what it is that you need, the citation, the information that I'll need to ask for it, and then turn it in and I'll get it for you through interlibrary loan. It takes about a week because they send it through the mail, for some reason, we cannot seem to make our um, instant access work, uh, which is another long story, that, but I'm not going to bother you with it. Uh, but it takes about a week, so give yourself plenty of time to do your research in advance. So does anybody have any questions about Google Scholar? Any questions about Boolean searching? Nope. Okay, so now that's Google, and you're familiar with that. Now we're going to go back to the Thomas Nelson webpage, and we're going to talk about some of the VIVA resources. VIVA stands for Virtual Library of Virginia, and these are resources that we have paid for, that the state of Virginia has paid for, uh, very expensive databases that are available to Virginia college students. So they're available to you. If you use them from campus, you'll go right in. If you're at home, you're going to get a pop-up box that says entry. First of all, you have to go in through this page. You have to go in through the Thomas Nelson web page. You will get a pop-up box that says enter your user ID and password. You type in your Blackboard user ID and password, and then these, uh, the database will let you in. 
So the ones that we're going to look at today are on that second handout, and the first one is Academic Search Complete. By the way, um, the first thing up there asks you to find a book on your topic, so you can just go ahead and use the online catalog and find a book, but I'm skipping that and I'm going right down to Academic Search Complete. And I'm going to go with my topic. Now last, in this class last week, was I on the George Wynn kit? Okay, so I'm going to stick with George Wynn. So I'm going to the Academic Search Complete database right here, and I'm going to type in my topic. And I'm just going to go with George Wick. Notice, however, if, if I wanted to get more detailed, I could do George Wick and murder. Notice I have an or. Maybe I want George Wick or Thomas Jefferson. Um, and I have a not. So there's and, or, and not. The very same Boolean operators that we talked about over here. Available in just about every database. Also notice down here, it says um, limit. You can limit these to scholarly or peer-reviewed journals. So if you only want to see the articles that are in scholarly journals that we talked about earlier, you can check this box. Also, you can limit it to full text, meaning if there's some information up there about an article about George Wythe, but the whole article isn't here, don't even tell me about it. It doesn't mean that it will make all the articles full text. What it means is it just won't show you the ones that aren't full text. I tend not to click that full text box unless for some reason I just, I'm at home or I just can't get to, uh, to the periodicals. Because then there might be a great periodical article on your topic, it's just not full text here you might find it here in the actual periodical in the library, or you might request it through Interlibrary Loan. So I tend not to do the full text box, but if you really want full text, that's the box that you would click. And then hit the search button. And we'll see how many results we get. We got 20. Okay, so here we go. Here's an article called The Mysterious Death of Judge George Wythe. And that is the name of the article inside the periodical. What's on the title? What, what is on the cover of the periodical? What's the name of the magazine that is in? American History. So it's in American History Magazine. It's in the February 2009 issue. This is the volume number, the issue number, and these are the page numbers that this article appears in, in the printed copy. Now, do I need to go get the printed copy in order to read this? No. No. And how do you know that? PDF full text. Right, it says PDF full text right here. PDF means it's going to look a lot like a photocopy of the actual magazine article. So here it is. It looks like they just photocopied and put it up here. Okay, so there's my article right here, and it is here full text. So this is one database, Academic Search Complete, that I could go to to find an article on my subject. Okay, now, what's the second one on your list? Okay, CQ Researcher. That's right here, so you're going to go right here to CQ Researcher. All right, when CQ Researcher opens up, you see the most recent current report, and then you see some of the ones that are a little bit older. If you don't have a topic for a class, an English class, a speech class, a history class, this is a good place to go to get some ideas for topics. So I always recommend students who are looking for a topic to come here. But I have a topic, so I'm going to go to my advanced search. Now, I can tell you that I may not find anything in CQ Researcher. Academic Search Complete indexes lots and lots of different periodicals and my, things like American history. So my chances of finding something in there were very good. CQ Researcher only indexes one periodical, and it's called 
CQ Researcher. So basically, it just indexes itself. And it is a database of current hot topics. So since George Wiss murder is not exactly a hot topic, um, I may not find anything. But I'm going to give it a try. And notice it says right here, to search for a complete phrase, place it in quotes. That's what we did to, with coal mine, remember? Use search operators to narrow the search. And, or, not, and then these are some other possible search operators that we're not going to talk about right now. Um, so I can type my topic in here. I could put it in quotes, but I'm just going to do it like this. I'm being lazy. And these are my results. So here's something called, these are not really good results because this is not the right database for me to be searching with this topic. But here's something called the Bicentennial of the Constitution, and no doubt it had something to do with George Wythe um, because he, he was very active during revolutionary times. Notice how old some of these databases are. And notice oh, what the order that they're in right here is they're in order by relevance, meaning this is the one that had the words George with most often, and this is the one that had it least often. And to tell you the truth, these probably have nothing to do with our George with. This is probably the only one that has to do with our George with. It's 100% relevant. It's old, but that's okay in this case. Uh, but if you're doing a search on a current topic, you do want to look, excuse me, look over here because this database goes way back to the 1920s. You can open up the entire article. I think, however, this has nothing to do with our George Wythe, but I'm going to pick it because it's newer, and I want to show you a newer article. Those old ones don't have the same format as the new ones. This is one of the newer articles, and what it does is it has, these have nice, long background articles. So there's lots of information here to give you a big picture of what's going on with your topic. <coughs> there's lots of charts and graphs. So if you have to have a visual aid for, say, your speech class, this is a good place to come from. These are bookmarks. They just jump you down into the article. They don't take you out of the article. And there's always one called Procon, which is really nice, because this is good if you have to take a point of view on a subject and um, defend your point of view. They always ask the question, isn't it, oh, are toll roads the best way to maintain highways and bridges? One person says yes. The other person says no, so you get both sides of an argument, so this is a good place to come if you're defending a point of view. Um, this is also great, it has a Cite Now button up here, so if you have to do your work cited page, you just hit Cite Now, it does the citation for you, you want to switch to MLA probably, because that's what we usually use here, so it'll do the MLA citation for you, but check it against your book, because I have seen it make mistakes. So does anybody have any questions about this one? <coughs> okay. So this one didn't turn out to be very good for George Wythe, but it would be good for you if you're doing a current topic. I'm going to go back to my home button. The last one on your list that you need to do is Opposing Viewpoints Resource Center. That is right here. So I'm going to do this one. What time does the class end? Okay. 1250? Okay. Okay, so here's Opposing Viewpoints Resource Center. This is a good place to come, again, if you don't have a topic. There's a long list of popular topics. And again, this is a hot topic database. Probably not the right place to come if you're doing a topic like George Witt. So what you need to do is pick your topics carefully and pick your databases carefully to match your topics. I'm not, I, I'm really using the wrong databases for George Wythe, but these are the ones I want to show you. Um, what I'm going to do, I actually could type in George Wythe here, and it might find something, but I'm going to actually come down here 
and just pick, um, I'm just going to pick race relations because I want something where I know I'm going to have all my tabs highlighted. Now, I can't, if I don't want to pick one, I could just go right up here and type my topic up here and it would search on my topic. So I picked race relations as my topic. And I got most of my tabs up here highlighted. This first one here is a viewpoints tab. Now viewpoints are a little bit different from some of the other things that we've looked at. Uh, the company that does this database is called Gale Cengage. These are the people we buy this from, Gale Cengage Learning. And Gale Cengage Learning also owns Green Haven Press. And Green Haven Press puts out a series of books called Opposing Viewpoints. And they've been putting these out for years before the internet came along. And what Green Haven Press would do is they would say, okay, we're going to pull together a book where we have where we take a controversial topic and then we're going to pull together articles that from people on both sides of the issue. So they hire a book editor. In this case, they hired James Haley. And they said, okay, James, we want you to go read a lot of articles about global warming. And we want you to get people from both sides of the global warming debate. And we are going to publish their articles in one book. So, for example, chapter one, the first essay says, global warming poses a serious threat. The second one says global warming does not pose a serious threat. Um, the magnitude of global warming may be extreme. There is no evidence that the magnitude of global warming will be extreme. So you get both sides of the issue in these opposing viewpoints books. Now, along came the internet and they decided to take these individual articles that originally came out of magazines and have since been published in these books and put them up here on the internet. So as you can imagine, this is a citation nightmare. Uh, the English department really never even could give us the definitive answer on how to cite this thing. Uh, but I think uh, Gail Sengage kind of came to our rescue by doing a citation, right or wrong. Uh, so what you have here is these articles out of originally published in a magazine, then published in those books, and now up here on the internet. So you've got points of view. We did uh, race relations. Family intolerance is a major obstacle for interracial marriages. White guilt over racial issues contributes to poor rape, race relations. Embracing racial diversity can help to unify America. Many blacks continue to oppose interracial relationships. Uh, so if you go down through here, you get both sides um, of the issue. So there's going to be somebody who agrees with whatever you say and somebody who disagrees with whatever you say. This is all full text. That's the good news. So all you have to do is uh, click on one of these. We'll click on this first one. Well, first of all, let me show you what this is. This. Um, particular article was written by Maria Root, and she was the person that wrote the magazine article originally. She was the author of the article. It was republished in a Green Haven book called At Issue Interracial Relationships. The editor of that book, the person who went around and pulled together all these individual articles, is David Hagen. And it was published in Detroit by Green Haven Press, and that was the date. When you're ready to do your work cited, if you use one of these and you're ready to do your work cited, way down at the bottom is where they put their source citation. So they try to help you out by doing a citation for you. So does anybody have any questions about the... Um, the uh, <coughs> viewpoints articles. And on that piece of paper right there, it says use a viewpoints article. I hope you can find one. It'll make it easier for you because what I ask you on that piece of paper matches up with what's on here. But if you can't, 
and you have to use one of these others, then go ahead and use, well not websites, if you need to use one of these other tabs right here, you can go ahead and use it, but you, the information is not going to match up so perfectly with what I ask you. So you'll have to kind of wing it, cross, cross off editor and put down um, the date of the publication, for example. The reference tab gives you articles out of reference books. We talked about reference books last time, so you know what they are. Magazines, um, this will give you popular magazine articles, academic journals, the scholarly or academic journal, newspaper articles. These are articles that have a lot of statistics, so if your teacher says, back up your point of view with statistics, this is what you need. Multimedia is usually national public radio talk shows. Good, useful, but that's just about it. Websites takes you away from opposing viewpoints and puts you out on the World Wide Web. So you have to be really careful if you go to these websites and use your web evaluation skills. Um, I just wanted to click on advanced search right here. We did the quick search. We're going to do. We're going to go to advanced search. I'm not going to search again. I just want to show you that even in this database. Uh, you can search in different ways, but you still have the and, or, and not. So if your topic has more than one concept to it, you can do, you can have two different keywords. Scroll down here so you can find the keyword again. There it is. So you can have two different keywords or two different concepts, and you can and them together. You can use or, you can use not. So again, those Boolean operators help you get better results. We've been given a research assignment, mm -hmm. a final assignment. I think this will be a good database class for you all to use um, for your topics on your final research. It gives pretty much um, the opposing viewpoints that we're looking for. So is it okay if they use this assignment sheet with their own uh, research topics? Sure, that's what they should do. Okay. Yes. Okay, so use this sheet mm -hmm. to help you know get the information you need for your research. Uh, yeah. So when you do that sheet, you're not going to use my topic. You're going to use your topic and whatever topic you are planning on using for your own research. All right. And I'm just going to show you one more thing here, and then we're done. Um, these right here are the most popular Viva databases. If you, um, if you're looking for something that's full text, JSTOR is full text. I highly recommend JSTOR. It's not on your sheet, but it is searchable and it is all full text. And it is more literature, uh, scholarly journals, but give JSTOR a try. I think you'll find it very helpful. Uh, you can do the basic search, or again, you can go to advanced search and use your and, or, and not. Operators, I have a few more. Near, uh, you might want to put poll within five words of mine. So that's what near means. So they have various ways of searching here. Um, if there's nothing right there on that first page that really seems to get to your topic, you've looked at these databases, you're having no success. Um, let's say you let's say it's my topic, George Witt. I'm finding some stuff, but surely there must be more. Now what I can do, notice these are the most popular Viva databases, but there are actually about 200 Viva databases. So you're only seeing a small fraction of them here. Here is a list of all the 200 Viva, Viva databases by title. And here's what I think is the most handy thing, the list by subject. So I can come right here, and since my topic happens to be history, I can click on history. You can click on your topic, whatever it is, and it will jump you down here into this list, which is just one long page. Takes me to the history section, and I can go through here and say, well, I tried JSTOR um, with some success. But here are some other databases, other Viva databases that weren't even on that front page that I can go ahead and try. And I guarantee you, American History and Life will give me much, much more than anything that I found in any of the other Viva databases about George Witt because I've got a history topic. This is really where I belong. So does anybody have any questions about that?
And this is especially true if you're doing medicine. Um, a lot of people do medical topics. So if you come here, medicine and health, jump to medicine and health, and look at all the medical databases that we have. So you don't want to restrict yourself to just those on that first page. All right, well, that's all I have. So now you have lots of worksheets due. The ones you got today are due this time next week. Uh, so you want to turn those in to the circulation desk. I'm part-time, so I'm not here all the time. And chances are when you come by, I might not be here. Just make sure that you know, put on your piece of paper what section you're in so it doesn't get in the wrong template. Anybody have any questions?